Ridiculous. And we are back on the Mana Symbol channel. It's time for more Modern Horizons 2 Modern. <laughs> and uh, we're playing some lists from the weekend's challenges. So first up is a deck that was, uh, for whatever reason, was called Sultai Game Objects. I guess for obvious reasons, once you see what the deck is going to do. Um, so we've got a three-color deck in black, blue, and green. And the uh, core of this deck exists around the cards and Academy Manufacturer and Chatterfang Squirrel General. Sort of. Maybe. We'll see how the actual games play out. Um, so Academy Manufacturer is uh, kind of the, the key player in this deck. It's a 3-mana 1-3 artifact creature assembly worker. It says, if you would create a clue, food, or treasure token, instead create one of each. For obvious reasons, this is excellent with Urza Lord High Artificer. Not only can each of those artifacts then be used to generate mana, but it makes your construct fairly large. Um, on top of that, we've got Gingerbread Cabin in our mana base um, full of forests. Ooh. Full of forests. Um, Gingerbread Cabin, of course, is the Eldraine Forest uh, Land, which is fetchable since it's got the forest land type and... Uh, it will give you a food token if, when it enters the battlefield, you have at least three other forests in play. Um, so that will be replaced by um, uh, Academy Manufacturer. Uh, additionally, sorry, we've got Chatterfang. So Chatterfang is two and a green for a 3-3 with Forest Walk. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens plus that many 1-1 one, one green squirrel tokens are created instead. So with... Academy Manufacturer and Chatterfang in play. If you put a Gingerbread Cabin into play, you will not only get a clue, food, and treasure, but you will get three squirrels, which is pretty impressive. Um, we also have Lonus Cryptozoologist in here. Uh, this is a fantastic little card. Uh, one, two for green and a blue. Legendary creature, Snake Elf Scout. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, investigate, which means you generate a clue. Generating a clue will be replaced if you have an Academy Manufacturer um, with a clue, food, or treasure. But most importantly, you can curve Lunus, Lonus into Academy Manufacturer, and that will immediately trigger and give you the, the uh, three... Uh, tokens or Lonus into Chatterfang, which will immediately give you a clue and a squirrel. Um, so we've also got Gilded Geese in the deck. Um, when this enters the battlefield, it creates a food, which synergizes with uh, Chatterfang and Academy Manufacturer, but uh, additionally can pop out additional foods uh, later in the game for one in the green. Um, we have a one of Trail of Crumbs. This is one in the green for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you create a food. Whenever you sacrifice a food, you may pay one. If you do, look at the top two cards of your library. You can reveal a permanent card from among them, put it in your hand, and the rest on the bottom in any order. Uh, we've got the Cauldron Familiar Witch's Oven, uh, part of which was banned from Standard. I want to say the Familiar was the part. So the Cauldron Familiar is black for a 1-1 cat. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. You gain one life, sacrifice a food, return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. And Witch's Oven, which is tap sacrifice uh, creature, create a food token. If the sacrifice creature's toughness was four or greater, create two food tokens instead. Fun fact, uh, Urza has four toughness. Um... We've also got some engineered explosives. All the way at the top end here, we've got new to modern, uh, old boomer style card upheaval. Six mana sorcery to turn all permanents to their owner's hand. And then one of our other um, sort of bevy of win conditions is Karn the Great Creator, which can wish for a large number of things from our sideboard, including Academy Manufacturers. Now, here's the super crazy bit. We've got a Clock of Omens in our sideboard. Why do we have Clock of Omens? Well, if you have an Academy Manufacturer and a Clock of Omens and a Witch's Oven, and a cauldron familiar, you can infinitely drain out your opponent. So uh, what happens is you tap your witch's oven, you sacrifice your cauldron familiar, or if your cauldron familiar is in the graveyard, you sacrifice a food token, get the familiar back. Um, then you use clock of omens and another artifact to untap your witch's oven if, if you've tapped it now. Now you sacrifice your cauldron familiar. Academy manufacturer will give you one food, one clue, one treasure. With Clock of Omens in play, you can untap your Witch's Oven. And then at that point, you are on an infinite loop. You just sack the Cauldron Familiar, and you use your two new tokens, 
uh, the treasure and the clue to untap the witch's oven each time, and you sack the food to bring back the cauldron familiar, and you just drain your opponent out uh, as long as your graveyard's not cut off. So you have an interesting uh, infinite damage combo there. In addition to the fact that Karn the Great Creator also just gives you some great flexibility in the sideboard, you have all sorts of cards that you might need in different matchups, Liquid Metal Coating to destroy lands, Damping Sphere against Big Mana and Storm cards, uh, Another Witch's Oven in case you need that combo piece, Pithing Needle for general use, Tormod's Crypt for um, Graveyard Hate, Ensnaring Bridge um, to keep you safe from Creature Beatdown, and another Academy Manufacturer. So that's everything in the deck. Besides the uh, Metallic Rebukes and Engineered Explosives, which are just a, a bit of interaction. So it's, it's a 23 land deck, which is nice and robust. Um, no Emery's or Mishra's Baubles in sight. Um, this was the most successful version of this deck over the whole weekend. So keeping that in mind uh, as we go along, that uh, maybe there's some value to just playing a, a higher number of uh, land drops. and. Um, and playing a deck this way. Uh, it's not as neat and affinity-esque as some of the other decks that are floating around, but uh, needless to say, the record stands uh, for it. Not to say that this is necessarily the final iteration, as with last season, the first successful version of the Velomachus Turns deck was a 80-card Fires of Invention deck, and I, I believe it's been quite consistently shown that the 60-card version without Fires is just is just better. Um, it's put up a lot more results in total and not just in my hands. Um, uh, even in this weekend's challenges, one uh, between 20th and 32nd place in one of them, uh, someone was playing four-color Velomachus turns, and I think they managed a 23rd place with that. So Velomachus turns showing up in the modern challenges still, which means that if I would like to play it, I still can, which makes me happy. Because while this deck is awesome, I don't know if I could play this deck particularly well in a tournament setting. Uh, we'll see how many game actions we have to take with our game objects. Fires was a good card. Oh, with Fire Super Friends. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the Fires is a fine card. It's just tricky to play it effectively in modern. Big Ben had some success with a 60 card Velomachus Fires turns list, um, but it's just not that much to my liking. Um,. I'm not saying that it's a bad deck at all. I just, I believe it is the inferior version, and I believe the data supports that fact. Now, maybe the data is sort of self-fulfilling. Um, well, we're 23 land decks, so we could hope to draw into some, but I really don't like having this upheaval and Karn in my opener. Um... Especially because if I play this Gilded Goose on one to try to get this Cauldron Familiar going, and they have a removal spell, we kind of end up in, in No Man's Land. I think we can do better than this on the play in the dark. Do I? Do I really believe that? Oh, I'll keep this just because I haven't played this deck before. I don't have particularly high hopes for this hand, but we'll see. Your win con was Nickel Bullis Elder Spell combo. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Uh, I remember that era of standard. I I stopped playing standard right after War came out because I went for a uh, cruise ship contract, so I wasn't able to keep up with standard so much. Eternal formats kind of lent themselves better to my ability to keep up with Magic content, Modern and Legacy in particular. And then I bought into mtgo by buying into uh legacy strifo pile woof that is not a good draw but uh we'll get our cat oven combo going here doing it standard style baby okay 
my computer is giving me some grief here. Yeah. So let's close this window and close this window. There we go. Popper Affinity is easy mode now, by the way. Uh, excuse me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right then. Neat. All right. I mean, if I was going to draw anything. Well, they don't know that. Don't don't tell them. Shh, shh. I don't need them to know that, Luke. I don't need them to know that yet. They've got a freaking swarm yard though. What what a champ. Oh, Sylvan Anthem. Uh-huh. Moi. I need to see more. Okay, so we'll, we'll block the one that could grow. Put damage on the stack. Sacrifice my kitten. Yeah. Do you have more opponent? Do you have more? You know, when you're going out on the lawn, the mower. You have to cut the grass, get the mower. Watch out for mite of oaks. Thanks for the heads up. Oh no, what is this? Oh my god, it's the um the command. Yeah. Crap. Uh, I guess I'll sack my goose to save the cat. Man, that sucks. Man, this sucks. We are getting spanked here. Yeah, that's uh, that's an awful lot of creatures they've got going on. They've got 12, 12 power and toughness going. No more, uh, 14. <laughs> I don't think we can survive this anymore. In fact, I, I'm comfortable to just scoop out at this point. This is this is too much. I can't deal with this. That's fine. We'll, we'll get him in game two and three. Or maybe not. Who knows? Maybe we already found this deck's ultimate weakness, Squirrel Tribal. So fatal push seems good. Fire and Ranger is probably unnecessary. Fire and Ranger is interesting because it bounces gingerbread cabins over and over and over again. Well, probably the rebukes though are the smarter cut. And then, well, I guess we'll just keep one. Oh right, we have engineered explosives. Okay, we 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 easily could have been okay there, but I scooped it a little aggressively. Nevertheless, I think I'm okay with this kind of wording. Maybe we keep the rebuke over the choir and ranger here.
Watch out for Mite of Oaks. You crazy. You crazy goofball. Okay. I actually have two lands. So I can go turn one oven, turn two Lonus, turn three Chatterfang, turn four Cauldron Familiar. And the reason I'm going to do that in that order is um, I want to save the creature drop for after Lonus is in play. Um, So the only double colored spells are double blue. So let's set that up as soon as we can. I suppose I could have gone turn one nothing, but I like the idea of having the witch's oven up in case I need to sack Lonus or Chatterfang. And then also once Lonus is in play and sackable, then I can sacrifice the um, Lonus to... Oh no! It's all going so badly. Uh, Chatterfang, though, plus Cauldron Familiar combo is pretty pretty cool. You generate an extra squirrel every loop. That's not bad. I would like my 23 land deck to draw me some lands on time, please. One time. One time for the one time. If the opponent is straight up missing their land drop, that's also acceptable. I will accept that. I accept you for who you are, opponent. Uh-huh. 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 Uh. Why did you do it in that order? It was so rude. I didn't sack my Lonus. I was f 6 I should have gotten the value there. My bad. Apologies, everyone. Apologies. Mm -hmm. I know it's horribly mana inefficient, but I'm going to set up in a way that guarantees that I can um, get a squirrel token off of my Chatterfang here. Obviously, having the extra food would be really relevant if I have to save my cat again. Yeah, they're also playing Chatterfang. Of course they are. Oh, but they didn't have anything extra. Unless they have the command again. Gosh, I hope not. Well, there's nothing I can do about it if they do. They're, they're probably going to get me eventually with it. If they kind of have the... Okay. Oh, they need to do that in case... In case I actually let combat damage go off. Okay, this is good. Because this means I now know that they don't have... Um... <laughs> that's, uh, that's awesome to hear, Alex. Crap, their Chatterfang has freaking Forest Walk, though. Oh, well. <laughs> I guess mine does, too, so hooray. Um... It's got three mana, sacrifice an artifact of creature, you gain one life, draw a card. Wild. We have Surgical Extraction? What's at the pause, yo? There we go.
All right. So a glimpse of tomorrow, huh? Oh, oh yeah. That it that would do it. You've got to be kidding me. Rude. They don't have a second one, do they? Oh, I guess maybe they don't have a way to sacrifice something. Or they don't have a way to enable... Come on, what? Rude. What the hell, dude? This, this, this is getting out of hand. Freaking Verdant Command, both games just, just wrecking me with the weird trinket text. I say weird, I mean, obviously it's intended to be there. It's just like, ugh. What a what a weirdly effective card. And I say this game is nuts. Very much so. Very much so. Well. Yeah, that that uh that's a hell of a draw. So now I can sack the squirrel and make three squirrels. Uh oh. But I, oh no, they can kill my Chatterfang with their Chatterfang, or my Academy Manufacturer with their Chatterfang, plus Sack 3. Oh my god, and then the Ravenous Squirrel is going to get gigantic. Well, shoot. If I had played Gilded Goose, and then Sack the Goose for food, and then Sack the three Squirrels to kill their Chatterfang, that would have been the thing to do, I believe. Now, now I'm just going to be in trouble. I mean, not too much trouble, because hopefully we can pull out of this mess and then, um, um, pull out of this mess and then upheaval at some point. Hey, Alex MW14. Thanks for your sub. We're at 47 sub points, so if we get three more, we can get ourselves a new emote slot. Additionally, I'm at 999 followers, so at some point, hopefully tonight, some new wonderful human being will wander in here and hit that follow button, because then we'll be at a, a cool 1,000. Squirrel Sanctuary, okay. Huh, Chatterfang even gives you a squirrel when you lose a squirrel. Wild. So they already had the ability to kill either my Academy Manufacturer or my Chatterfang. Um, I'm going to block their Ravenous Squirrel, which can grow with my 1-1, one, one, and block one of each of their Squirrels with my, my other two creatures. So in theory, if they trade Squirrels, then, then they can trade less Squirrels to later kill my creatures. Um, but that's fine. Doesn't look like they're planning, planning on doing anything pre-combat. Oh, no, they are. The, why, the, why did you regenerate this, then? Okay, they, they clearly don't understand what is about to happen here, which is fine. Unless their last card in hand is, like, a removal spell. So they're killing my Chatter Fang. So we'll just sack this squirrel in response. So I'll get it. Uh oh. No. You don't have another removal spell and you're actually going to use it here, are you? What? Rude. Crap. I needed those treasures. Good lord, what a what a perfect draw on their side. <laughs> and that's it. That's 1,000 followers. Thanks, Luis Sanka. One thousand followers. Thanks, friends. Well, now I don't have any way to generate mana. I think we're just dead in the water, unfortunately. 
three lands is not going to do it. If I had the two treasures from that turn cycle and then this turn cycle, I would have been fine. And if I had played this a little bit tighter, um, I could have killed their Chatterfang on my turn and I would have been in a better spot. I just, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to wrap my head around the logistics of this deck, um, which I did not do effectively. Um, so we'll just scoop out of that one. So I think we could have navigated that better, but that does feel like an awful matchup. Or even if it's not an awful matchup, it certainly is if their draw lines up this perfectly. Triple Fatal Push plus the Command, and they're on exactly um, on exactly zero cards in hand. Uh, it is warm in here, so I'll be right back. Death by Squirreling. Yikes. But good to see the Squirrel archetype is not garbage. Again, both both games I made small-ish misplays that were obvious like a half second later. So I'm not going to be super annoyed with myself about it. If I was taking more time to think the lines out before they happen, then I would probably be better off. So maybe let's try to be a little more heads up in the next one. Just take extra time on these early game actions. You yeet. I, I don't know what that means, Blitz, but welcome. Hope you're having a good night, friend. We cracked a thousand followers, but you, you were one of the first and one of the best. Well, I think you were one of the first 200. What up, JK Torborg? Brad Nelson said they had to nerf the Squirrels deck in testing because it was way OP. Huh. I don't know what to say about that. I guess that's a fun fact. Well, a fun synergy deck. I, I don't think this is enough power. So this is this is going to be a keep. And I guess I'm throwing back Witch's Oven. Quirin Ranger, Quarian Ranger, whatever, um, actually is plus one mana on a turn if you don't um, have a land in your hand to play. So with this hand as is, we can play Chatterfang or Academy Manufacturer on three. Ooh, what do you got coming in, Blitz? New milk cards? I'm really worried about this start from the opponent. I feel like this has got to be the um, five-color uh, domain aggro deck. With them going Heath into Breeding Pool into Ignoble Hierarch. I think they're probably going to fetch a Triome and play a 5-5. Five five. 
we are probably not going to have a good time getting over that. Although it doesn't have Trample as a base, the Territorial Kavu. Sterling Grove has been everything I'd hoped and dreamed it would be, with all the creatures running around in Enchantress Prison has been killing it. Yeah, I uh, I saw one of those decks made top 20th in the challenge. Yep, there they are. They've got uh, 4 out of 5 domain. Shardless Agent. Oh my. Oh my. Hey, you guys said, you remember when I said they were going to have a 5-5? Five five? Oh, this is, this is much worse. I mean, not really, but the fact that my mana has really not come together at all here is pretty bad. And I have to fetch Shock here, and if I need to use Choir and Ranger for mana next turn, I have to Shock again. So while I've seen the Elves deck in Legacy do this Choir and Ranger trick to have mana, um, they don't have to play Shock lands. Which is concerning. Like, I, I could be at 18 here if I wasn't playing Shocklands, but unfortunately, modern is as modern does. And we are about to go to 8 or lower. Likely 7, and it could be worse. And I really don't know what I'm going to be able to do after this point. Although, if I can play... I guess I'd play Shatterfang this turn, and then next turn play the Manufacturer. But we'll see if I... Yeah, of course. So this has been the problem with a lot of these decks is like, it feels like it's too slow and we keep playing creatures that just get removed. Like everyone's playing a bunch of like cheap interactions and super beefy beatdown creatures. Ugh. I guess I could just play Lonus again this turn, but that feels like a wash. I didn't play anything else. Okay, that's potentially useful. Although now I don't have anything that triggers. Huh. Boy, that's rough. Let's just play Lonus again. Play Chatterfang, take the hit for five next turn, and then what? Play the biggest creature I can. Pass the turn. See if we're not dead somehow. Assuming there's a Mantis Rider coming out too, or something at some point. I guess this deters them from attacking with Shardless Agent, so I'm just taking five here. If they have the Domain Pump spell, I will die exactly, and I'm very much okay with that. If they go hit you again, and then they. Bolt, my Chatterfang, will also be dead, but that's fine. They get to rummage. It's not just the biggest, baddest Tarmogoyf ever made. No, no. It's more. They discarded a Mantis Rider? I feel like that means I'm dead. But I'm certainly dead if I try to um, block or some such Hierarch. Okay. They could cast a Mantis Rider, right? Am I crazy? I'm not crazy. They could have cast Mantis Rider. Wild. Well. Oh, right. The way I played my creatures out, I can't trigger anything this turn. I guess I'm just chump blocking. Damn, the sequencing in this deck is so brutal sometimes. And by sometimes, I mean every single game we've played so far.
Like, if this was a fetch land, it would be such a different situation to be in, I guess. But it's not, so I, there's nothing I can do about it. So hopefully I get to chump block with Quiron Ranger. And I can sack Chatterfang to kill one of their creatures if they have a removal spell. I wonder if they were, like, holding on to Bloodbraid here. So they finally hit their next land. They're casting Dragon next turn? Well, Dragon certainly won't kill me. Although I feel like it has more text than I think it does. Twelve mana, four four flyer. This spell costs two less to cast for each blah blah blah. Each creature you control has vigilance if it's white, hexproof if it's blue, lifelink is Oh, I see. Trample if it's green. Got it. And first strike? Holy crap. Yeah. Alright, fine. Jesus. <laughs> I literally didn't realize that card had text until now. Don't know why. I guess I was just, like, so uninterested in this archetype. <laughs> uh, yeah, well. <laughs> to be fair, this is the nth game where we've drawn zero copies of uh, uh, Metallic Rebuke. Dragon is a crazy lord. Eh, it's something. It's certainly something. I've also drawn zero engineered explosives. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna... I, I, I choose not to feel too bad about the losses so far. It's really felt like we've been punished for nothing in particular. Goose, Lonus, Cauldron Familiar is a good opener. Yeah. Man, we just cannot find anything, like, playable. Goose, Lonus, Witches Oven. I mean, I'll, I'll keep this one because we've got the um, Engineered Explosives this time, at least. Um... Probably ship one of these, play turn one goose, turn two fetch, uh, EE -E for 12. Um, I mean, we'd have to discover a lot of colors, but it's not impossible. I know in Un, there's like nine colors. I think I think in silver border rules there's nine colors. I I don't remember what all the extra colors are. I know brown is one. I know hazel is one. Um I don't remember the other ones. There's a card called Avatar of Me, and its color is your eye color. I believe that's the way it works. It's like power is your feet or your height in feet, and its toughness is your height in inches. Something weird like that. Oh, yeah. Sure. Turn two shareless agent. Why not? Flips a helix. Unreal. Freaking. I'm so. I'm so annoyed by this. <laughs> Why is this deck so garbage? I, I thought this would be fun, but uh, it is. It is not. This is. This has been zero fun. Now we're gonna draw lands, right? Oh. Okay. Uh... Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't even know what I want to do with this. Like, do I want to cast it or do I want to wait a turn and then, <sighs> where's my Shaper Sanctuary? Would that do anything? Is it, it 
creature artifacts have improvise? I don't remember what that card actually does. It's got some claws on it, right? Like non artifacts, but there's some weird claws. It gives something improvised, but it's not everything, right? Mm hmm. Well, at least, okay. Non-artifact cards get improvised. Man, why why does this draw keep being so crap? And like I can EE on one here, but it doesn't help more than it hurts. Like, I think I was just supposed to play a goose and pass. Inspiring statuary. That That's the one I'm thinking of. Oh, no. We're, we're, no one's thinking of Shaper Sanctuary. Sorry. I mean, maybe the people who actually took uh, someone at their word. No. No, they said Shaper Sanctuary. Wait. No. We were thinking. I was thinking of inspiring statuary. Oh, you're actually saying Shaper's Sanctuary? Oh no 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 I I don't think I want to play I mean maybe we do I don't know well this is just insane why 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 are they on so many removal spells my god I I do not remember this happening the other day when we were playing the teamer deck like ever but, like, you say that they had it all, but did they really? Like, the the way these games played out, did they have it all, or is this just normal? Because, like, it's like playing against Burn, right? Except all their creatures are, like, 4-4s four and 5-5s. Five yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously, Shaper Sanctuary would have been fine in these matches. Sorry, I was thinking of Inspiring Statuary, because I had a bunch of artifacts in my hand at that moment. I was like, I, I guess? General Ferris Rockrick, sure. Yeah, we're 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 good to be done here. Holy crap. What a thrashing. Man, I I didn't think super highly of this deck when I looked at it, but I, I thought it would be better than this. Jesus. Got trashed by squirrels and domain zoo. Woof. Like, not a little either. Like, I, I felt, like, completely inept in both games. Like, I couldn't do anything. Well, I don't know, Jig. I mean, and, and it's making me nervous about the teamer decks I've been playing because, like, if, if this is how these are going, like, I mean, maybe the difference is just, like, playing things like uh, Aether Vial and Red and Six and Galvanic Blast in the main deck. I, yeah, I so with Cat Oven popping up a bunch, I was like, this can't possibly be worth playing, right? But so many people are trying it that I thought, oh, there must be something to it. And it managed to 20-something the, in the challenge, but maybe they just had really good matchups. I'm not sure. It's bad. Well, I think it's not modern power level, that's for sure. I, I, I would say I've basically never tried it in modern before now. Um, I don't know, it's just annoying. It feels like a lot of those matchups were not necessarily, like, ones where that should have been as bad as it was. I did screw up one of the games against the Squirrel deck. The the Domain Zoo deck, I, I didn't have a chance there. Which, it's sad, because if we had Cat Oven earlier in those games, we would have been okay. Because blocking 5 damage every turn from the Kavu, plus gaining uh, 1 life. Convoluted Combos go. Well, I've played Convoluted Combos before in Modern, but... I don't know. I, I think we're getting smacked up a bunch. Yeah, I mean, that's a very different deck, Luke. Uh, I'm definitely um, interested in, in trying that at some point. Although, again, I don't think the Cat Oven is the best version of those decks.
Luris. All right, so we're going to be against all removal again. Hey, how's it going there, Tabin? I mean, okay. Turn two, Chatterfang. Turn three, start hatching foods. I mean, it's not much, but... Uh, oh, no. Yikes. Here I was thinking I was going to get Thoughtsies, when instead I'm just going to get killed on turn three. <laughs> Silly me. Oh, no! 23 land deck, why? All right, if we burn through to decks, tonight's decks really quickly, I'll uh, I'll play some Teamer Recruiter Urza. I, I want to see if that deck is as good as it felt over the last couple times I played it, because now I'm getting scared. Just getting trashed so badly by everything I'm running into. Like, <laughs> I feel like I'm definitely going to die on turn three, right? I'm not I'm not crazy for that. I don't think I'm crazy for thinking I'm going to die on turn three here. You just 4 one with Teamer again? Good to know. With Ragavan? How was Ragavan? I want to know specifically how Ragavan was, though. I haven't played that version yet. Maybe, maybe that's the version I'll play tonight. So start with Manamorphose, then play Lavadart. Swiss Spear. Okay, that's not as frightening. Although every spell they play right now is pl is plus four damage. So that's a four damage Manamorphose. Ragavan Rex Control, you love it. Yeah, I, I understand that. I mean, I, I get I get what could potentially make Ragavan strong. But if you look at the matchups I've hit tonight, it would have been a train wreck. It would have been completely and utterly pointless to play Ragavan in the deck other than spending your turn one, spending one mana on something that doesn't help you ever and means that you're gonna um you, you're gonna have dead cards in your deck. Okay, so we died on turn three. Um how much am I actually taking? I'm I'm curious. It's an awful lot. That ground rift was like 11 damage or something. They still have one red mana left and uh, two cards in hand. 12, 6, and 7 right now. Second ground rift? I'm going to take 40 damage. I'm going to take 40 damage on turn 3. Fun fact. Oh, yeah, it's definitely fine. Completely acceptable. Uh, 20, 38. Squirrel might not be able to block. <laughs> yeah, it certainly seems like it, Alex. Huh. And of course we're playing the version like and, and this this deck is playing Metallic Rebuke. Not that it would have been particularly useful this game, but like this deck is not playing no interaction. We're just like not not it's just not coming together. Ugh. And we were on the draw, but still. Brutal. Brutal. I don't even know I don't even know how we're supposed to like even think of attempting to stand up in this matchup. Maybe I'm supposed to keep the rebukes and cut the upheavals because they're just like not gonna happen. I just don't I don't want to cut the upheavals ever. Like that's part of the reason I wanted to try playing this deck, and it's just it's been so pointless. Though the one time that it would have been really good against the yeah, uh, it would have been good against the Squirrel deck. They nuked my Academy Manufacturer, so I couldn't generate the treasure tokens I needed. 
to just cast the damn thing. Like 23 lands, I thought, wow, this is like really land heavy, but it hasn't felt like it. I can't keep that. Not while knowing what this matchup is. All right. This is uh, poor, but it does play. Like we have a fatal push for their first creature. We can give them off, off creatures will be okay, but like three pieces of removal plus Chatterfang are probably not going to be good enough. Oh my god, what a draw. Fantastic. Love it. Thanks, deck. Thank you. I'm glad we're playing good cards. Wait, I have to use a food for the um, Fatal Push anyway. I don't have black mana. So let's just play a Witch's Oven in case they have a... Uh, a bolt they want to use on a goose. Mm -hmm. Really? No attack, huh? Okay. Because we've got high hopes. We've got high hopes. Oh, I know. I'm aware there are cards we just haven't drawn. We've drawn most of the synergy pieces we want to have, though. And it's always been like, I'm one turn away from doing something interesting. Lightning Bolt. Okay, well, I'm still one turn away from doing something interesting. Path to Exile. Okay, well... I'm still one turn of... Oh, I'm dead. Like, that, that has been the pattern of the these 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 matches so far. We're, like, we're constantly one turn away from managing to do something. And we just can't do it. Uh, yes. Yeah, we can do that. Well, I don't have to do it in that order, right? I can let them play all their stuff pre-combat and then do that during combat. So, while what you're saying is true, Phoenix, I think it's important to say state that, like, I can leave the Cauldron Familiar in play for now, and then once they go to combat and declare their attackers... Well, see that? That card, Cat cannot help me against. They're playing Ground Rift and Crash Through. Of course they are. How could they not be? Oh my god. Brutal. Am I making game objects? I've been trying to. I, I really have. It uh, it has not gone well, Brian. I'm going uh, I'm to be blunt. So I'll block anyway. What are you playing? Why? Why now? Like what? Okay. Just just like general like, uh, we're well on our way to a 3 to two. Uh I think we're actually well on our way to an 0-3. Um and anything else that happens beyond that is wow i love how greedy they were at least do you think they're going to go for lethal i do i think they're definitely going to go for lethal here um they need to do one more priority pass they did okay i thought for sure they would um Flashback the Lavadar to go for lethal. And that was that was a wild play. Peddling salty game objects. That that is that is indeed the case, Dry Boomer. We I, I, I am a salty game object. Oh now oh now you flash back the Lavadar. I'm so glad you did it before the fatal push resolved. You you wouldn't want me to think that it's possible you were considering not doing it. No, no, no. No, no, I, I see, I see. It's very important that you do this right now. Well, hold on. In response to my own fatal push, 
Let me get my cat back. It's very, very important, opponent. I need to gain this life now. I could not possibly wait till later. Got him! Alright, well, we are live. Yeah, that's a... Uh, that's a card. Salty cat stuff. Mm-mm, salty. Man, <laughs> a symbol shot first. <laughs> uh, excellent reference. There's somehow on three cards in hand. Oh, two. Sack the Sunbeck Canyon? Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> that sounds like a Douglas Adams book, Dry Boomer. Teaching them about math and cats and the folly of human effort in a cold, unfeeling reality. Oh, I know you're not directly quoting anything. I'm just saying it vaguely sounds like that kind of thing. I'm not saying that was literally anything in particular. Yeah. The last book's title. Um, the last book's title was like, and something more. Because I just listened to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy radio show seasons that I'd never heard before. And the sixth season was a book that I've never read. I'd read all of the books up to the fifth one. So long, thanks for all the fish, and mostly harmless. Yeah, I read the fifth one, but there's a sixth one, and I forget what the name of it is. But it's not directly written by Douglas Adams, or at least not, not wholly. They didn't attack at all? You're crazy. What are you doing? You this you have this game. My my creatures have zero power, friend. They have no power here. Well, I guess we'll prep for uh Urza. Look busy, Urza's coming. Although I will have to start sacking these foods to gain life, so. Well, that's a card draw. It's not that good on this battlefield. Hold on. I can spend a food plus a mana to sack a food to make a food, which will also give me a squirrel. Plus the cauldron familiar will give me a squirrel. And then I can sack two squirrels to try to kill one of their creatures. But I'm not going to do it now. Your memories of the books are like a fever dream. <laughs> the opponent was on turn five and hadn't won yet, so they were confused about why they'd want to attack. That's fair. That's fair. I don't understand. Everyone else has fallen over by this point. I watched your previous game, streamer. All your other opponents had died by now. Oh, I mean, you died to them. They had died in the sense that they had left your, your vision. Because they'd gone on to do better things. I would like a squirrel, please. All right. Sack of food. So I'm going to try to kill their Lumamancer right now because they're tapped down. I think that's the right thing to do. The text, sacrifice any number of squirrels, is delightful. I, I, I hear that, Dry Boomer. Don't understand what they're going for here. It's a sick game, Rosewater. Cats in ovens. Squirrels sacrificed to kill sassy, uh, sassy Lumamancers. 
Hell, even killing a regular Lumamancer would be re reprehensible enough without it being a clever one. Just as Garfield intended. Kind of. <laughs> I mean, this definitely this definitely has a uh, classic magic feel to it. All right, all right. I, I believe we've officially stabilized. So I suppose I should proactively kill one of these light scribes before they untap. Can I kill two? I bet I can. Huh. It's like playing Yogmoth combo against a creature deck. Like once you get your stuff set up, they're just they're not coming back. See ya. Oh, they do have one. All right. So I got to respond by going make a food, make a food. Um, no, I, I can do make a food with a goose. <laughs> have you heard about our Lord and Savior, Yogmoth? All right, we got a game win, damn it. We got one game win. All right, let's uh let's fix this sideboarding that I fucked up. <laughs> Not to mince words. That seems way better than what I was doing. Now we're now we're talking. Remember, chat, it is unacceptable to keep a hand with no removal here. This will not work. I would like engineer explosives to be functional, but I don't know. <laughs> Stupid sexy Yagma. Yeah, is that uh Pony Keepers are seven. Alright. Infinite blocker plus goose. I'll take it. Just couldn't block him. You couldn't intercept him. That is a hardcore boomer joke. No one your band could either. <laughs> Yo, what's up, RK99? They're just dying like dogs against uh against Boros. What the deck does. Uh mostly die. But we're supposed to be making cat pies. Which is not as gross as as it sounds at first. Light scribe. Okay. So they're they're, they're going slow. Okay. It's good for us. That draw is good for us, too. I'm not going to get tempted into playing Lonus here, so just going to go Forest, Goose, Oven, and have two blockers just in case. <laughs> me too, uh, me too, Phoenix. I think we're very dead here. <laughs> but maybe not. Maybe maybe one time, one time, nobody dies. All right, looking bad. If they have a uh, ground rift or 
um, crash through, we're in trouble already. Now, Ground Rift is more beatable on this board. Um, but it's easy for them to have the play through that if they have a Lava Dart or... What have you. So we'll see. If they have Crash Through into Flame Rift, I... Or, yeah, no, Ground Rift. I'm very much dead. Mutagenic Growth. Now? Why? I mean, okay. Re resolves. Uh huh. What, uh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Double mutagenic growth? Yeah, no, not, not for Crash Zoo, for uh, Ground Rift. Ground Rift is the beatable one. With this board, we can beat Ground Rift here. It's gonna suck, but we can beat it. Chalice of the Void, you're never around when we need you. I mean, people are playing Chalice of the Void. It's not us. So the Light Scribe's gonna hit me for 12, by the way. I believe. Their bear is going to hit me for 12. Just, just fun facts. But if they don't put a Lavadar in their graveyard, we can survive this. Unless they're playing Gutshot. <laughs> Wait, what? They pointed none of those copies at my Gilded Goose? Not a single one? Second Ground Rift. I think I'm going to won this turn. Are they going to point them? Are they going to point all of these at the goose? No, there's no way they missed the goose entirely. There's no way. Yeah, their uh, Light Scribe is a 16-16 right now. Did they point zero copies at the Goose? I will block your Light Scribe on this board. I will absolutely do that. No way. What are you doing? What a throw. Hey, Philosopher. So. What? Wild. Such arrogance. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to hell. I know you said welcome to this, but I'm going to go with welcome to hell. My opponent just swung at me for 38 on turn three. Just fun fact. Okay. And I took... Uh, sorry, not 38. It was like 60. I took zero damage and they conceded. Phenomenal. I don't know if opponent is much of a limited player with that kind of that kind of attitude. Can you post a deck that you've been thinking about? Of course. They could have put me to two. Yeah. Or even one. I'm, I'm not sure. Your opponent is disconnected. Really? Kill surprise. Yeah, that 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 definitely screams shame concede. <laughs> the demise of family values. You know, it's funny, I haven't seen the Boros deck do that in a while. Like, even the last couple times I played against it, it, it didn't manage that. Man, my computer is puffing tonight. <laughs> the opponent, the opponent definitely has class. Swing for 60, you know what? I already won this game. Croxa, Pyromancer, Sedgemore. Abundant Harvest, Clean Dust, Fatal Push. Ooh. 
I don't think I like the mana morphoses in this deck. But uh Yeah, Arcanist could be a good good get for this deck. And maybe more copies of Croxa. I don't particularly like Mana Morphos here. I think those choices are better. I, yeah, even I could make a pass at this list. It's true. Not maybe not if I cut the Mana Morphoses. Maybe oh, it's freed. Probably on omelet. Not omelet. Oh, Saltai cookbook. Okay, with Emery, I guess. Um, so I can go turn to Lonus plus Cat. So let's do that. Niv draw five, I, I believe you'll find that there are a few problems that Niv draw five can't solve. <sighs> discards Vengevine. Oh, discards Asmora, Noma, Narda, Dice, and the Kuldakar. And then plays the second one, of course. Asmara, Nomara, Dar Dar ah. Asmara, Nomar, Dick of Dice, and a cool car. I, I got it screwed up once, and then it's just messed my mouth up for like the, la the rest of the week. Asmara, Nomara, Dar, Dar Dick of Dice, and a cool car? No. Nomara, Dick of Dice, and a cool car. Yeah. Asmara, Nomara, Dicka Dice, and the Cool Dakar. There you go. Got him. Got him. All right. Was that Liz coming in? Oh, it was Philosopher. Just that. All right. Play Lonus. Play Kitty. Meow. Next turn, play Manufacture. Saga, sure. Uh huh. I got one card left. Better be a good one. Hard cast, then fine. Crap. Yeah, yeah, it does, uh, hands. Yeah, uh, Mistress Factory. Really? Oh, yeah. Yes, I will. I will certainly block. Thank you. Thank you. So this means next turn I get to play Manufacture, get a triple trigger. Oh, I need the land. All right. If I draw a land, I get to do a lot of good stuff here. I'm playing 23, but uh, four of them are cabins. Ah, uh, rats. Oh, wait. I can make a food, but then I, I can't go anywhere with that. Shoot. Alright. Well, I guess we'll just make a food this way. Ha. Huh. Rats. Well, that didn't quite work out. How many dice does Dice Factory make? It looks like a lot. 23 land deck again. Like It's like when I play 24 land decks. Can can never draw land to save my life. Just, just does not happen. Oh, shoot. Cycles, Street Wraith, and Response. I don't like that. Wow. Rude. Holy crap. Well, my opponent can draw their copies of Metallic Rebuke.
Watch what you wish for. You'll end up in the real estate business real fast. I, I don't know what that means, but okay. There are about to be some very large constructs on my opponent's side of the battlefield. And because I have not hit any lands and they hit the metallic rebuke, we are super duper screwed. Oh, I see. Yeah, but of course it'll happen in the next game where it's not useful at all, right, Hans? I believe that's how that works. There's only two ways to play magic. Land flood or land screwed. So they're going to have a big construct attacking this turn, and there is nothing, nothing I can really do about that. Plus another one on backup. Well, but I can bring back the cat to block it. So maybe we're okay here. Hmm. Might actually be okay. All this action in my hand tells me you'll be in trouble if you make that decision, opponent. Whoa. Be careful. This is kind of cool. We bring back the Cauldron Familiar. We get a clue. But instead of getting a clue, I get a food, a treasure, and a clue. Which I think means next turn I'm playing Urza and Karn, which is kind of hot. It's Witch's Oven all over again. Banned in Standard! This shit was banned in Standard. Hat Oven for a modern era. That's right. I, I don't like that stuff, Hands. That's too much. I, I don't like lying to my opponent. I understand that, technically speaking, that's a bluff, but, like, I'm fine with bluffing about concealed information, but, like, showing some of my concealed information and pretending, like, oh, no, I I actually meant that was the other one. For, for some reason, that's a line for me. I, I'm not judging you for doing that. That's that's fine. Um, that's obviously an okay thing to do. Um, so if I sack two treasures here, I can make another food... Which is a net gain for me in terms of the number of artifacts. Yeah, that that's also fine, Larynx. Keeps them on their toes. Did you know that Hitler's plan to invade Japan involved powerful laxatives? It's true. But don't take my word for it. Ask, ask this college professor. Uh, he'll tell you. Well, this just got nuts. You want to get nuts, opponent? Let's get nuts. <laughs> Phoenix. Quality. Huh. So, play Karn, get bridge, play bridge, with no cards in hand. I wish my client wasn't running so glacially slowly. Choir and Ranger is definitely net mana. Yeah. Even Lonus, I think, is net mana right now. Because there's another Lonus. Hey, look, guys. We're finally doing the thing.
Hey, opponent, my constructs are bigger. What are you going to do about it? Hey, you guys think we should activate Lonus's ability this game? Yeah, me neither. So there's no time save in this list, so we'll just get the bridge. And then we'll just set up for the infinite combo within the next, like, three turns. They scooped. Exactly, Fusion Blaze. Exactly. <laughs> Is modern all Asmo.dex right now? No, no. We've died to... Uh, we'll, we beat uh, a terrible player of uh, red-white um, prowess. You would be ashamed. Um, I lost to Domain Aggro... And I lost to, um, what was the other deck? Oh, uh, the Squirrel Tribal. So we've been against a totally sweet swath of decks so far, actually. Operation Vegetation Hype. Heck W Squirrel Tribal. Yeah, it, 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 uh, it kind of kicked my ass. Not gonna lie. So Rebuke seems really good on the play. On the draw, it seems bad. I think upheaval's probably okay. The engineered explosives are super awkward in this deck list. Oh yeah, we lost to squirrels. They kicked our ass. So the the squirrel command, um, the squirrel command, uh, has a mode where it exiles a card from a graveyard. In both games, they sniped my cauldron familiar that I needed to keep me alive. Hey, how's it going, Daniel from Brazil? Hope you are well. Thank God you stopped the emus. I thank you for your service. I think I'm going to keep this because I could blow up an Asmora on turn two. Or do I need to do that? No, we just mulligan this. This this is a silly keep. You don't keep that. This is a bad keep. We don't keep that. This is also a bad keep, but I guess I have to keep the five. Yikes. When well, I got to keep their seven, hold on to your butts. Is this mulligan dot deck? I guess so. I guess so. So we'll play the mandatory tap land first, play a tap land on two in Witch's Oven, and then we'll pray. Uh huh. Oh, there's a feasting troll king. Oh, baby. Oh, an Emery. All right. And another troll king. And a saga. Damn. What? No, stop! So much stuff. Oh, crap. Uh, so they're gonna have a Troll King next turn, there's nothing I can do about it. Unless I blow up all their foods? And by all of, I mean two? And then I'm double ported forever? Well, that sucks. Feel like I'm okay just to scoop here. Like, we're, we're not getting out of this one, right? There's no way. All right, let, let, let's, let's give Freed the opportunity to be bad. There's a cookbook in the graveyard, though? God damn. Emery's so good with cookbooks. What a turn, too. I mean, yeah. They got pretty lucky with everything. But, you know. <laughs> I'll go buy surgicals. I get it. Yeah. Um, Troll King, however... Um, does say activate only on your turn. So they can actually um, bring it back at instant speed. Just just so you're aware. Um, that is actually a thing they can do. 
as long as it's their turn, they can bring it back in response to your surgical. So don't don't get caught by that because I watched someone do that. Turn three, troll king, not turn two, at least lol. Uh, I mean, I can prevent it from coming sooner, but you're right. Give me another one. Give me another one. Yeah, love it. They really uh, slowed themselves down for that. Yeah, you just surgical on your turn. Yeah, I'm, I'm just letting you know because I saw someone make that mistake earlier today on someone else's stream. Um, the person who was playing the Feasting Troll Kings was... I think it was Canister, actually. I know I watched a good chunk of Canister streaming this morning. It's been a weird day for me. I was up super early for no good goddamn reason. Okay. 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 Let's see how clever Freed is. When I crack this engineered explosives, let's see if they put the uh, the feasting troll king in response. We're we're dead here no matter what, but uh, maybe 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 maybe. Uh huh. How clever are you? Show me the yeah. All right. Now do the next step. Oh, he missed it. All right. He missed it. I mean, we're still screwed, but wow. All right, just dead. But he did miss it. No, there's no chance, Michael. But but I did I did I did wreck him on that play. Boy, did I ever! We got him so good right before we died. Spat in his eye. Okay, so let's get these rebukes in on the play. <laughs> it was at that moment you shanked me. <laughs> what are you going to do? Release the dogs or the bees or the dogs? When they bark, they shoot bees at you out of their mouth. I guess I could board in Endurance here. That's such a weird one-of sideboard card to have. Yeah, that's unkeepable again. Yikes. It seems like 23 lands and the low curve in this deck should work, but it's just not. It's not doing it. It's really annoying. So, oven. <laughs> Remember when shanking. Words to live by, Dry Boomer. Words to live by. Oh, this, this is good. So this means I have... No, I don't, because I can't have black and blue mana here. Well, crap. <sighs> okay. Well. Is there a water grave in here, though? There is. Okay, so in theory, I can have it for next turn. I think I want to get the cat set up. But this could be incorrect. I'm not sure. Engineered Explosives is definitely better uh, on zero against them than it is against us for the most part. <laughs> like my grandma always told me, sell your non-reserved list cards whenever you're not using them. And I, I keep those words with me to this day. 
Mm-hmm. So my engineered explosives can destroy uh Esmar and Omar to Dyson and cool the car. See, it's because I was trying to learn it the, the other way that people have been doing it after I learned it one way. You can't learn things two ways. This has been a learning moment with the Mana Symbol channel. Say no to learning twice. You can only learn once. Jeez. Boy, is that not just the story of this game. I mean, kind of, right? Like, and if the other way that you learned it, like, doesn't have any problems. Yeah, the thing is, Muffins, though, you, you generally want to, like, anything reserved list you can hold on to pretty comfortably. Triple book. Good lord. Close to combat. Sure. I don't need to blow your stuff up yet. Doesn't attack. Love it. Just not even wasting time. Okay, we're getting closer. Second cat doesn't actually do that much, but it's still worth playing out. I mean, I guess in theory it isn't if I draw Lonus, Lunus, but... Then I have an expendable cat. Sack the groove. The groove! The groove. Hoard everything and never feel the regret of selling. That's an option. All right, I think I'm going to pop my engineered explosives here. This feels like enough value. I guess this means I won't have metallic rebuke for this turn, but I don't know how much they can do on three mana anyway. This is a strange little game we're playing. If I ever get to the fourth mana for Karn, it's going to be... Pretty good. And I think there's a Tormod script in the sideboard here, just in case they do find uh, Feasting Troll King. Trail of Crowns, sure. They've got two cards in hand, so if both are... If one of them is the Troll King, they can get it into play this turn. Emery, good draw. All right, let's rip a land right now. <laughs> they mill over two Nature's Claim. Holy yikes. I'll take it. Rats. Well, it gets me there next turn. Do I attack for an extra one this turn? Is it worth it? Probably. Block me, coward. Fair enough. You've killed my cat. Discards Cauldron Familiar. Uh oh. Oh no, they've got cat, te cat technology too. They didn't bring it back? Weird. Alright. I mean, I'll take it. It's just strange. I feel like you want your cats in play, like, unless you have a reason not to. It's the bobble. Sure. Uh-huh. Uh, 
They're allergic to cats. Modern is secretly cat tribal versus cat tribal. Ah, uh -uh. always was. It always was. Astronaut shooting other astronaut in the back of the head meme. They sack their food for mana? You have a cat! What are you doing? It's like my opponent never played standard. What's going on here? What's going on here? You trying to tell me you never play standard? You can believe this guy? What a chump. Never played standard. Ridiculous. Only accepts fancy feast. Listen, don't don't criticize a picky cat, all right? It's a standard thing. It's the format by which all others are judged. To be great. Superior, even. So, bring back the second cat, and then if I need to tap my oven on the turn, it's fine. Hit him for two is probably worth it. This guy seems like a real piece of work. Yeah, yeah. You know what? All right. Land off the top. Anything will do. All right. That's fine. So, attack with one cat. Shatter my opponent's dreams. Snack. Tasty. Karen. Sack your bobble. Sack them all, you got them. Okay. Discards. Emery for food, sure. Trail of crumbs triggers. Oh, they're bringing the cat back, sure. Yeah. I did expect them to. I mean, I didn't expect them to do this now, but. Get Tormod's Crypt, shut down my opponent's game, and enjoy. What's the plan, opponent? Bonk. Urza's Saga. Good draw. Good draw. I'm sorry, what now? Well, that sucks. Wow. So out of the two remaining cards in the hand, they had an Urza Saga and a Fatal Push. That's rough. Okay. Love to see Freed get bullied. I mean, it's not over yet, Jig. I probably should have just plus the card in this turn, but I was worried about them making multiple um, foods in response and being able to bring back a Feasting Troll King, so I didn't. Um, it's This is fine. Like, the, the construct that's coming in is not going to have haste, and I have time to rebuild here, plus have the Metallic Rebuke, so I was just really hoping that I was going to get a card and downtick this turn by blocking with the Kitty. But thanks to the Gingerbread Cabin plus my Gilded Goose, I get both my cats back this turn. So, cats big for everyone. And then, if I want to, I can get Bridge or... I don't know. There's a whole bunch of options. Sorry, what now? You're sacking your Emery? I guess I'm okay with that. 
Wait, I have a goose to block with. I don't need to do any of that. But before I put this cat in the graveyard, let's bring a cat out in case they do have like a surgical or some other kind of graveyard hate. Um, I'm going to play proactively around that. So cabin comes in. Get one of these back. If they play something that exiles my whole graveyard, I uh, get to wish for my engineered explosives. So that's kind of neat. Oh no, opponent. It's a catastrophe. <laughs> I'm not proud of myself. I'm just killing them with these cat triggers. This is kind of hysterical. Uh, I don't know. Shock this in. I'm at 22. Uh, Attack with one free cat. I can attack with two if I want to, I guess. Oh, they have the construct coming in. Never mind. There's plus Urza. Sorry, Karn. And then we get the bridge next turn, and that should lock this game up. In theory, instead of getting the bridge, I could just get another Witch's Oven. Which will increase the speed at which they're dying. Not sure which one's better. They have another push? Nope. No, they're just very slowly making a construct. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh no, a 4 4. But it's activated abilities can't be activated. Whew, thank God. Also, could we talk about. You know why Urza's Saga is an enchantment? Because I think if it was an artifact, it would be bad. Although, I guess it would probably be insane in, in Hardened Scales and Affinity. But I think it already is. Maybe it would have been even more insaner. I'm just trying to think of, like, Urza's Saga if Karn was... Sh oh, no! Needle! Ah, oh, they got something that wasn't something crappy and small! Oh, they named Witch's Oven. Okay, so we just get the bridge here. That's fine. Yes, I know he won the challenge on scales. I'm very well aware of that. I am a modern player, Alex. Come on now. So the needle's not too bad here. It's certainly annoying, though. Wait, should I get a manufacturer instead of a bridge? Does that do as much work? No, we, we just get the bridge here. I think I think I'm get, trying to get too cute. Getting ahead of myself. That's another food. Ah! I feel like Manufacturer will get this game won quicker. Maybe that's not the right way to do things. In fact, it's definitely not the right way to do things. Yeah, just get the bridge, Zach. Don't, don't, don't get penisy. Although, in theory, they can eventually kill this, but currently they don't have any green mana, so they can't play any of those Nature's Claims that they revealed before. And at the moment, uh, they won't be able to pay for Metallic Rebuke, so...
Day Street Race. Opponent's in the mood for death. Street Wraith again. Jesus. Free. Just no Fs given about his life total. Only Fs in chat. Sure. Oh, that can blow up creatures. If they're able to make food, which they're currently not able to. Uh, Yeah, you're right. All their lands produce green. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks, friends. friends. I can't... Um, think because I'm an idiot. Yeah, that one. Yeah, don't don't listen to the words that are in my mouth. They're bad words. Interesting choice. So you'd you'd like me to drain you for one, is what you're saying? Okay. Thinking is hard. Me fail English. That's impossible. So just in case I draw an Urza. That's a great draw. They've got all four of their cookbooks in play. That's fantastic. For whatever reason, I think that's just that's just neat. I I enjoy this game state that's going on here. Karn Karn feels like really, really obnoxious in the mirror match. But again, like, just like the previous game, we didn't draw mana, and we just flailed around and died. Now it seems like this game, they're the one who's not drawing mana. What is this for? Why would you want to mill yourself at this point? I have a Tormod script. You know that, right? Like... Okay, so they hit nothing useful. Oh, you're totally right, Alex. Or, not, not Alex, Michael. I just, you can always count on me to miss the just kill them line. Why don't you take the, why don't you take the path that leads you quicker to the killing of them? Eh. I don't know. Why choose not to be an idiot? Yeah, you're right. We, we should attack now. Especially, they're at three. So they're, they're dead if they block and they're dead if they don't block. We call this deck Fancy Feast. I mean, cat oven decks have been around for a long time, right? I, I don't think that you get to name them now. I think Whisk is... Well, I think I think we have to compete. Yes, cat cat food is the obvious. I think cat food is, is, is probably the, the level one name. But again, like, not only was this deck a standard deck, it was banned in standard, right? Like... All right, Fancy Feast. All right, someone said we were on the road to a 3-2, and I thought we were on the road to 0-3, and we should have been, or we should have been closer. <laughs> but, uh... All right, I'll be right back as my opponent is grieving through their death.
Did we did it? Yay, we did it. Oh, it was banned in anticipation after Omnath was banned. It was banned in standard. How did they cast the cat? They just brought it back by sacking food. The opponent's deck should definitely be uh, cat food ASMR. Because... Asmorano Dicka Diced into Cool the Car has ASMR in the name. I feel like she has almost every single letter in the English language. So yeah, uh, this deck that I got sent. Uh, yeah, I mostly like this. I think you could go up on your number of unearths, maybe. Uh, maybe not. Well, yeah, maybe two. And then eliminate. I don't like eliminate in a main deck. I think I'd rather see Dreadbore or Dam. Um, and then the Manamorphose, I think, should become some number of Dread Horde Arcanists and Croxas. That's just my feeling on the matter, though. I'm unconvinced about Abundant Harvest. Yeah, but that was standard Jun Sacrifice, right? Muffins on Hill? How's this feel compared to Teamer? Uh, well, different, grindy. Um, I mean, I won the last two, but neither of them felt like I deserved it because, like, I won one of them because I was the one with the um, Karn, and the other one I won because my opponent colossally misplayed. So, like. I, I don't know, Jake. It it doesn't this does doesn't seem great. Loan us into manufacturer on the play. I mean, if this isn't good enough, I think wins are wins. Yeah, but you can you can speak to how good you think a deck is in the larger sense through a small sample size. Yeah, th this this is far worse RNG than Teamer. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, uh, if they're on Storm, I think we're toast. This hand is not going to beat Storm. Wins are wins, assisted wins. Yeah, but I don't think just the win rate should determine how good you say a deck is. Like, especially in a small sample size. Because basically what I'm saying is, given a sufficient sample size, I think this deck will fail more than it succeeds. Yeah, Ch Chatterfang does seem pretty good. Um, I'm definitely more interested in this card than I was before. Um, but, uh... Yeah, he, he's, he's, Nito is on Storm, and I think we're dead. I can't see myself beating this opening. If I had Metallic Rebuke in hand, I could actually play it right now, which is really cool, but I don't, so. <laughs> Next turn, I'd get to generate three squirrels and the three different tokens, but in modern, that's just not going to cut it. What? This is unlike you, Nito. Why did you tap or float the red? Wait, what? Oh. Still, that was very strange sequencing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sure. Yeah, why not? Uh-huh. Is is that turn one, Robert Loblaw, or tier one? Because turn one squirrels are definitely real. Yeah, right. Like, we just played a game where we beat... Um, huh. 
we just played a game where we beat another similar deck, but we crushed them because we had the Karns. Show, show me the Past of Flames. Right. Yay! Turn three combo decks. Yeah, Stor Storm has to be one of the worst possible... One of the worst possible matchups. Unfortunately, we're going to finish out this league without playing Upheaval once. Which is that that kind of sucks. Like I, I don't like that. I like. Am I supposed to cut the Karns for the Tormod's Crypt and the Damping Sphere and the there there's there's there isn't enough stuff to board in. I guess I can bring in the one Endurance. So, uh, and I think Veil vale is better than Push. Although we we could probably find room for both. Me too. What are the upheavals for? I I can't really tell you. Like, I, we never even once played an Urza in this deck, too. Um, I mean, in theory, what's... I think... I Actually, that's a lie. There was the one game where we went off really hard with Urza. Um, the, what the upheavals are for is when you play Urza, you, you get to... You basically can win the game quite easily. Um, Nice, that's great, Brian. I was a little worried about the way the editing came together, but I think it was just like couldn't see the forest for the trees. I think we should be playing Battle of the Bridge, maybe as a sideboard card. Yeah, Battle of the Bridge has definitely been really quality, and uh, Academy Manufacturer could be a reason to bring it back. Chatterfang with uh, Thopter Foundry and Sword sounds fun. Every time you make a Thopter, you also get a Squirrel. You just get to start sniping out their creatures. Could help you against uh, Dryad, etc. Nope. Like, <laughs> I can't keep this one either, for sure. No way. All right. It's garbage, but I'll keep it. Well, Battle at the Bridge does not win more against uh, aggro decks at all. At all, at all, at all. That is 100% like the right level of thing to have. Yeah. Good against Prowess, good against Burn. Reasonable against, I don't know, um, uh, Stone Blade. Probably reasonable against the, the new the new deck, the uh, Domain Zoo. I would hazard a guess that it's fine against Domain Zoo. Yeah, pretty good against Shadow. Not if their Shadows are, like, hyper-gigantic, but yeah, especially against Scourge of the Skyclaves, right? Perfect. Thanks, opponent. Wow. I guess they did mulligan. Huh. Probably could have made a food that turn and then... Well... Okay. Yeah, I, I... Oh, I also should have gotten that triome. Man, I, like, double punted there without just, like, my brain just clicked out while I was speaking. As usual. All right, let's put my 3-3 three, three into play and very slowly fail. Dear opponent, I hope your plan for this turn cycle was 
ritual into gifts I'm given. Please! Rats. That targets, right? It doesn't. What'd they put in their hand? Uh, steam vents, gifts ungiven, spire blossom went to the graveyard, serum visions, pieces into their hand. Well, rebuke is a good draw. So I attack for three, and I get to attack for four next turn, and five the next turn, and six the next turn. That ain't not bad. Because I can make a food plus play veil or metallic rebuke this turn. If they play pieces again, we're definitely just going to slam a rebuke. Probably they are digging for a land. Squirrel stonks only go up. I guess so. I guess you did. I bet you did. Second serum visions? What? You suck. You suck! We found a land. Ritual gifts I'm given. Metamorphose. Okay. Just wait. What? What? Oh no! Oh, for the love of. And they put them all on Shatterfang. What? Oh, god damn it! That's so rude. I it, yeah. Oh, that's just what a kick in the teeth. Oh, what? Oh, they didn't even point one upstairs so that I could fizzle them with metallic rebuke. No, 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 no. At least I'm not hungry. What, because I've got two food tokens? Ooh. Two. Um. Well, I can cast Metallic Rebuke, and that's it. So I really hope they don't have infinite rituals into Past and Flames. Because depending on how that actually sequences out, I may not be able to do anything about it. Barrel. Woof. Oh, no! It had to be Mystical Dispute, too. It couldn't be Remand. It couldn't be anything that cost them two mana. Oh, no. Oh, they had to land anyway. Oh, they didn't have the... They didn't have the ritual? What? How am I not dead? I don't believe you. Stop it. I don't like this opponent. I'm scared. So... I can make the tokens, or I could play Urza. Urza doesn't do anything for me on this board, so I think I'm just... I just have to make the tokens this turn. But I can't even attack, so I just need Veil to be good enough if they have a Gifts Ungiven that they need to resolve, which they probably don't. I know they put pieces in their hand before, and they turn six and we're not dead. Correct. We've interacted twice. Fatal Push probably slowed them down more than more than you'd think. Uh, Selene Divisions, Rebuild, Manamorphos, Reman. They have Rebuild in their deck. Good lord. <laughs> oh no. Freaking rebuild. I guess they're ready for the, the new meta. <sighs> yeah. Oh yeah. What do you get? Rebuild. Two and a blue return or all artifacts in their owner's hands. 
Yes, it's legal. It was in uh, Modern Horizons 1. It is very much legal. And, like, the whole point of me playing my turn that way was so that maybe, maybe next turn I could be set up well. By the way, they have remand in their hand. I know they have remand in their hand. There's nothing I could do. Uh, I'm 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 just gonna. Well, maybe I'm not gonna scoop out. But like they have remand now forever, and like I can't. I guess I play Gilded Goose this turn and then hatch a food, and then maybe next turn play something with Veil back up, and then I don't know. This is this is not yeah. Freaking grape shot. Grape shot for four. Target all on Chatterfang. Ugh, it was brutal. Uh huh. Mana wine. No, it's just that I was so excited about this deck, Larynx. And it it's it's seemed so much worse than the teamer deck. And if this deck made twenty something in a challenge, then like I feel like the teamer academy manufacturer deck could have done much better. They just burned it off. What? Crazy. I don't understand what's happening, but I'm okay with it. Now we get gifts ungiven in response. Nope. Weird. Well, I just don't know what to say to that. I know they have a remand, but maybe they don't have two. Um, and Karn for Tormod's Crypt here could keep us alive. No, but I know you have a remand. Why would you do that? Uh... Oh. All right, fine. You got me. Damn it. Double counter. <laughs> I'm still, I'm just holding out of this Veil of Summer because maybe next turn I get to play Urza if I draw land or... Maybe uh, it protects me from a um, Gifts Ungiven. No, they have a remand. If they have the Gifts Ungiven, I'm toast. All right, there it is. All right. I'm glad I never had a chance. Well, I mean, I'm still going to do it. Because it, it could have been mistaken. The remand could have gotten discarded at some point. Nope. Never, never, ever didn't have it. All right. Just dead. But I'd like to think I put my best foot forward there, actually. Despite the fact that it was, like, so horrific. I don't know why my computer is working as hard as it is today, though. It was, it was working better over the weekend. Wah. Well, it's mostly magic online. Weird. Uh, well, we never really generated that many Phoenix, and even when we, e like, even when nothing was in play and the game was totally fresh, it was working way too hard. So, um, yeah. So this deck, I, I do not like this build. Um. I can see how Cat Oven um, could slot into one of these decks, but I'm not sure about that. Chatterfang seemed a lot more impressive, sort of, but this this clumpiness here, it's kind of the same Academy Manufacturer um, tireless tracker problem, and I yeah, 
I just the witches oven and cauldron familiar thing was just such a such a letdown a lot of the time. I mean, it actually did win um, a bunch of the games for us. We never got to cast the upheaval, so I have no idea how good it is. Um, but hopefully the next deck that we're going to play is going to be able to cast some serious upheavals, um, assuming that I can get the last cards rented. No. Damn it. Uh, I'm not able to get Urza Sagas right now. Anyway, uh, so Salt I get Game Objects. Yeah, I th this build is not convincing me. Um, Canister has a very different build. Um, I'll, I'll pull that one out for now just so we can talk about it for a second and see maybe how I think that that deck is potentially a lot better. So with this one, a lot of the problems um, we were having were, were uh, 23 lands, but no card selection. And that was very problematic. Like other, like we just flooded or we screwed and there was no real way to mitigate it other than the one trail of crumbs, which I was never able to resolve. Um, whereas this deck, the canister built, this looks a lot better in my opinion if you're going to play a no interaction version of this deck. So let's let's talk about the big differences. One, you've got Cannon in here and the fourth Lonus. And the reason that this is a big difference is um, being a lot lower to the ground and without the uh, questionably useful uh, copies of engineered explosives, that's... Um, kind of problematic for sure uh or though they were they didn't feel particularly good and um this whole pile seems like just a lot more streamlined and focused on going for a combo now it isn't playing any interaction at all but i think when, with the games that we just saw there um it's just not necessary to have interaction in a lot of game ones. Um, and sometimes you can get some points for doing so, but I'm not sure that they're always worth what you're getting, um, especially when you're playing something like Metallic Rebuke, which can be outstripped uh, in, in power and usage in a lot of matchups. So um, I will definitely come back later this week and try this version, version out. Um, and keep your eyes on Canister and what he's brewing up in this space, because this seems like it could be potentially be very good. It's 22 lands with four of them being Urza Sagas. It's not playing the Gingerbread Cabin mana base. And I think there's enough stuff going on that you just don't need to with this version of the deck. Um, with with Springleaf Drum, Mox Amber, and Kinnon, that kind of... The, the power coming from those cards sort of makes up for the power that you might want from... Uh, gingerbread cabin gingerbread cabin of course is better against a lot of random interaction but since you already kind of have to commit to playing like a two toughness creature for two mana on turn two it's like you can't dodge people's interaction at all um whereas when you're playing the teamer decks with ren and six and and, and these kind of cards um you have more of an ability to play like uh turn one um you know, Gilded Goose that people don't want to remove, uh, turn to Ren and Six, and then start being more proactive and developing your strategy, you know, the, the cards that you really want to hold on to. Um, so, yeah. I think that's probably a lot of the problem I was having with the Sultai deck, is that you just, like, had to play out to the board and feel really naked a lot of the time. And, like, we tried, I tried keeping sevens that looked loose. That didn't work. I tried mulliganing aggressively to uh, five card hands that actually did something. That didn't work. Uh, yeah, Recruiter is awesome in the, the teamer build. So that's definitely something I thought was a big improvement. Anywho, if you are in the future uh, watching this on YouTube and you didn't get too tired of my bitching and moaning about how that deck was going, I hope you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, leave a comment about this deck and uh, check out any other deck list you're interested in. If you want something that is sweet and running uh, Academy Manufacturer, uh, I cannot highly recommend enough any of the 80-card teamer builds. Um, the one with re uh, Recruiter, Imperial Recruiter, is by far my favorite, but uh, the other ones are good.